Hey there, it's great to see you here as we explore an orchestration recipe from orchestrationrecipes.com. My name is Shannon Moore, and we'll be looking at some tips and tricks for Synchron Prime users looking to make their mock-ups of this recipe sound as real as possible. Let's start by taking a listen to what we're working with. This is the completed recipe played back here by the Synchron Prime Orchestra. Now, we're not going to focus on the orchestration itself because that's covered in detail at the Orchestration Recipes website. What we're going to do here is focus on the performance and how you can take advantage of the options and your Synchron player to breathe life into these virtual musicians. You can use these same tricks in all your compositions. It's a great way to learn how to get the most of your Synchron instruments. There's a lot to cover, so let's get started. First, download the recipe files from your Vienna Assistant under Additionals. It contains sequencer projects for the most common DAWs, with all the tips and tricks we are showing in this video already integrated. If you already have an Orchestration Recipes account, you can find this recipe in Volume 1. There are many more Orchestration Recipes available with the packages you can get at orchestrationrecipes.com. Here you will find great musical instructions by Philip Johnston and a quantized basic MIDI file that lets you experiment with the raw musical material. So let's get right to it! Step 1 is a proper preparation. For automation, we will be using Velocity Crossfade, Timbre Adjust, and Velocity. Our preset will be Oboe 1 and 2 Velocity Crossfade Sustains, and finally the articulations needed for this recipe will be Legato Con Vibrato, Long Con Vibrato, and Short Notes Portato Agile. Step 2 is articulation selection. Use different articulations to create authentic performances. Start with the legato articulations as default and use the classic long notes when no legato transition is triggered. Add portato at the end of the first phrase to round things off. Step 3. Phrasing. Use the velocity crossfade feature with MIDI CC1 to shape the dynamics of the two phrases. Start the slider around the mid-level and create a crescendo in the first bar. Keep it at the highest level for the next two middle bars and then add a decrescendo in the last bar. Step 4. Fine-tuning. Add more dynamic nuances using the Tamper Adjust with MIDI CC8. Don't forget to activate the slider in the Synchron player, otherwise you won't hear any difference. Now move the Humanized Delay Scaler to around 40 or 45 to avoid robotic playback. Even the best players don't start and stop at the same time, and the humanization will add a little bit of human imperfection to your music. Great, the first oboe's all set. Now go do that all over again for your second oboe and you're ready to move on to the strings. Strings will always benefit from some extra attention and our four editing tips will remain the same for all sections. We'll start with the first violins. Step one, use the sports auto articulation as it has a very pronounced accent and fits perfectly with the phrase. Another alternative would be to use staccato, but as this instrument has a different function than the staccato lines and the other strings, this also adds some more variation in texture, or flavor, if you will. Step two. This example is one of the rare cases where you will use the velocity preset. Sports auto notes are acting like sustained notes and therefore controlled by the velocity crossfade slider and the standard velocity crossfade sustained presets. So to make your life easier, just use the velocity preset and use the MIDI velocity per note instead of drawing curves. Step three. Use different note velocities with accents on beat one of every second bar and add some minor velocity variations on the notes in between these accents. Step four, slightly manipulate the volume by adjusting the expression slider on MIDI CC11. Start at the maximum level and decrease until the end of bar one, then increase again. Here I'll show you what I mean. Next, adjust the overall tone of the first violins by using the timbre adjust slider. This time, you can do it directly in the Synchron player. Since the value will not change during this recipe, there is no need to draw the curves in your sequencer. A value of about 113 will help make the violin sound slightly darker. Another helpful tip, 
adjust the release slider from the default value of 64 or the middle position to a value of about 50. This makes the sports auto notes less connected. You should also take advantage of the humanization delay scaler. As a rule of thumb, use more humanization delay for longer notes as these notes are shorter than in the oboes, which use a value of around 35 or so. Have an exciting meal simmering here and we're almost halfway through. Now let's get into these other string sections. Step 1. Use the same tools as we did with the first violins, only this time with the staccato agile patch. In other words, use velocity to create those accents mainly on downbeats and expression to increase this effect. Step 2. Use slightly lower values for the humanization delay scale slider, as the notes are shorter and therefore need to be more exact. Values between 20 and 30 will work here. All right, here's where the magic really happens and everything starts coming together. Think of it as the food styling part of music. These mixing steps describe adjustments to be made for each of the instruments in the Synchron player. First, increase the reverb slider to plus one decibels in the mix tab of the player for all strings. This brings together the whole accompaniment. Step two, disable the EQ for all string microphones by clicking the power button on both microphones. The EQ should be dark gray, not light gray. This also makes the string section sound a little bit darker and allows the oboes to really shine. And the last step, balance the instruments with each other using the master volume slider for each instrument within the Synchron player, which is available on top of the player in the Perform tab. Check out these exemplary screenshots in the instruments section. 86 for oboe 1 and slightly lower for oboe 2, about 120 for violin 1, and 110 for all strings except double basses, which sound great at a value of 85. And you're done. To recap, here are some of the things that we discussed today. First, we learned the difference between velocity crossfade sus and velocity patches. More information on this topic can be found here. Second, a proper phrasing of sustained notes can be achieved by a combination of velocity crossfade and timbre adjust, as well as adding an expression curve. Velocity crossfade and timbre adjust change the sound of the instrument while expression changes the volume, not the sound. We also learned about the phrasing with short notes with a played velocity. Instead of using velocity crossfade, the velocity values of your MIDI notes are used to establish a rhythmic base for a piece. And finally, balancing between the instruments for the final mix is done with the master volume slider. Now let's sit back, relax, and enjoy our ravioli with our ears. And there you have it. Your first official piece is done. A huge thank you to Philip Johnston from orchestrationrecipes.com. If you're trying to get your head around composing with virtual orchestration, the super clear guides at Orchestration Recipes are a great place to start. Otherwise, if it's helpful to you to have more videos like this one, where we show you how to create great Synchron Prime performances of your recipe mockups, please let us know. And remember, practice makes perfect in both cooking and music. Bye for now.